Okay, folks, this is a, uh, what I would consider a classic case of uh, uh, adolescent kind of gynecomastia. And this young man, he's a uh, 15 or 16 year old, and he developed uh, fullness in his chest on both sides about two years ago. As you can probably see from the, the photographs here, he has this round area, round appearance to his uh, chest. He's got puffy uh, nipple areola complexes on both sides. He's got some asymmetries of his chest as well. And when you examine him, I can feel a very dense, rubbery tissue localized uh, in this area right in here and in this area right in here. So pretty much a classic case of gynecomastia. That's not going to go away. Even if you take medications and uh, medicines, um, it, it may shrink, may be a little less painful. But ultimately, this is already doing a significant amount of psychological damage. So uh, this, uh, I encourage people to uh, have it removed because I, I believe that uh, you're, the, these young adolescents who are developing uh, psychosexually uh, and socially uh, need to uh, be able to take their shirt off out in the community and feel good about their body and this is uh, this is not a good thing. Okay so here's my patient on the uh, the table here we're actually giving some good anesthesia so he doesn't feel anything so I encourage people to consider good anesthesia. Uh, I've already operated on this side here and on this side uh, is uh, unoperated. Um, what you can see uh, when I pinch his skin here that this is the tissue location. It's right through here. It's real firm. In fact, when my anesthesiologist was injecting uh, local anesthesia in this area, she couldn't even get the, the needle through this because this is rubber. This is real thick. And as you can see, the puffy nipple areola complex comes from the tissue underneath. Uh, it pushes out at this whole area, and that's how you get this puffiness. So uh, on this side, I've already operated. I didn't do any liposuction because he has essentially no body fat. This is all a glandular or tissue issue. And uh, a point that my, my nurse made is that people think when I show you these videos of this tissue popping out that it's just a matter of making this small incision and squeezing and it comes out. But that's not how it works out. It's actually a, a tedious dissection to separate this glandular tissue uh, from the, the muscle beneath and oftentimes to the skin above. So you have to be really careful not to injure the skin. You want to make sure you get out all the glandular tissue and don't leave any behind. And uh, so this myth of just kind of popping it out like a zit doesn't really apply. It's oftentimes a, a, a tedious uh, dissection. That's why you need to go to an expert and someone who's been here many times before. But for the fun factor anyway, I'll show you the removal of this tissue. Again, it's already been removed and essentially um, I'm going to pull it out, kind of tough. I know it's a little gross to some people, but I think it's important to illustrate. So this is, I didn't take any fat. This is just the tissue here, and you can see this is uh, thick. It's uh, very rubbery. This is the area that is essentially sat right here beneath the nipple areola complex, and the tissue grows out from there. And so what you see in here, this is the, like the mountain peak essentially, and then the mountain is all under here. Um, and this is what gives you the puffy nipple areola complex, this tissue. It's just not going anywhere. And this tissue has to be removed in its entirety. And he'll, his contour actually is going to be pretty good here. Uh, remember that uh, you, you, you can leave tissue if you, if you want this to be perfect in some regards, but I don't think most people want to have this tissue removed. You need to have it. Uh, uh, removed for sure or else you're just not going to be that happy. So this is just an illustration of this tissue that was underneath this skin right here. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Okay, so now I'm done with the second side and the first side. As I told you, the first side essentially came out as one chunk of tissue. Um, it was all breast tissue. And the interesting thing about this other side is that this central chunk of breast tissue, this rubber part, was a lot bigger than this side. So if I just remove the, the, the breast tissue alone, these two sides wouldn't be symmetrical. So therefore I had to remove little uh, packets here of uh, tissue around the perimeter so that essentially the two sides look more even. So that's the, one of the artistic components of uh, gynecomastia procedures is, you know, you know you have fat, you know you have gland in a lot of cases, so the idea is, okay, you have to remove it or you have to contour it so that it's even as best possible. In this case, this is all going to come out. There's no way you can leave stuff behind. You're going to want to have this removed. And if you remove it all, will the contour be good? This contour is fine. I mean, it's a little low right here because I just took this 
whole piece of tissue out, but when you work it afterwards, it'll actually even up pretty darn nicely. One of the consequences of removing a large lesion from something is that there's going to be a change in the shape. So you just have to accept to some degree, either you leave the tissue in there or you have to really artistically contour the chest as best possible so that's even. In this case, I was able to remove this tissue just uh, with my uh, electrosurgery unit. Uh, in some cases, that I, I would actually do liposuction on a, uh, someone who had more body fat to try to make it more even. Anyway, so this is a classic case of uh, gynecomastia in an adolescent, and I really hope that this uh, helped.